In this video, we'll talk about the process of cellular respiration. Cellular respiration is a chemical reaction completed by all living things. This reaction takes place in the cells of the organism, allowing the cell to extract the chemical potential energy stored in glucose. The energy that is extracted from glucose is transformed into usable energy that the cell can either use to build other molecules or to move. Now before we get into what is happening in this reaction, we need to remind ourselves of three things. First, matter and energy are not the same thing. Molecules store chemical potential energy in their arrangements of atoms. Second, matter and energy cannot be created or destroyed. And third, energy transformations are not 100% efficient meaning that heat is released with every transformation. Okay, now that we've reminded ourselves of those important rules, let's take a closer look at what is happening in cellular respiration. This is the chemical reaction for cellular respiration. The two reactants are a single molecule of glucose and six molecules of oxygen. The products include six molecules of carbon dioxide and six molecules of water. Now remember that all molecules store chemical potential energy, but different molecules store different amounts of energy. For example, these glucose molecules store a relatively high amount of chemical potential energy, while oxygen, carbon dioxide, and water store relatively small amounts of energy. What is basically happening in this reaction is that you are using oxygen molecules to break glucose apart and to take the energy that it's storing, and then rearrange its atoms into lower energy molecules that you will then release. Your cell then uses that harvested energy to do work. Here's what's happening in your body. You eat a meal which contains glucose. Those glucose molecules from the meal travel from the digestive tract to the cells. Then, to get the energy out of the glucose, you need the help of oxygen. So you breathe in oxygen, which travels from your lungs to your cells. Now that you have both glucose and oxygen in the cell, you can complete cellular respiration. The glucose molecule is broken down and its atoms are rearranged. In the process, a portion of that chemical potential energy that was stored in the glucose is collected as usable energy. After the reaction takes place, you can see that the atoms from the glucose and the oxygen have been rearranged into six molecules of carbon dioxide and six molecules of water. Your body no longer needs these atoms, so you breathe out the carbon dioxide and you expel the water through urination, sweat, or as water vapor in your breath. The cell will then use that energy it harvested from glucose to do work. One thing to keep in mind is that we have transformed this chemical potential energy stored in glucose into usable energy. Some that will become kinetic energy used in cellular movement, and some that will be chemical potential energy stored in molecules within the cell. This transformation is not 100% efficient. So heat is produced as a byproduct of cellular respiration. This means that as your cells complete cellular respiration, they are warming your body up. Have you ever wondered why you heat up when you exercise? It's because your body is doing lots of cellular respiration to obtain the energy necessary to keep you moving. In that process of completing all of that cellular respiration, you produce a lot of heat, which raises your body temperature. So there you have it. Your cells use cellular respiration to harvest the energy stored in glucose so it can use that energy to build things and to move. This process produces carbon dioxide and water, which are released from the body, and it also produces heat as a byproduct.